So today I want to guide you through the process how you can interface a PDM microphone with the STM32 microcontroller. Basically, this is not a tutorial about the microphone itself, how they are working. So we will only have a look how to interface them and how to bring the data back, for example, over an I2S interface to an external um, DAC converter. So, but now at first, let's have a look on like a basic block diagram obstruction, how the microphone is working. So here we have the microphone itself at this point, and uh, this is uh, giving like an analog signal to an analog amplifier in this case. And the analog audio signal is basically fed it into some PDM modulator. So this means that it is basically a Delta Sigma modulator, which is clocked by an external clock, which we have to provide to the microphone. And the PDM modulator is giving out a data stream here at this uh, D out pin. And also, if you want to use the microphone stereo configuration, we also have a configuration possibility here over this LR pin where you can select whether it should be like left channel or right channel. But now let's have a look at first um, actually what the PDM stream is and also how the interfacing is working. So here we have the first diagram um, how the microphone could look like if we want to use it in right channel configuration. So this means that we have to pull like the LR pin to VDD and we are providing a clock to the microphone and the microphone is giving us back the data stream. And yeah, basically, if we just want to use the microphone as right data um, uh, microphone, we can see how the protocol here is working. So this means we are having a constant running clock at this point. And the microphone has always the valid data only on the falling edge. And like always on the rising edge, the uh, output is in tri-state. But you might wonder now, why is the output basically in tri-state uh, during the rising edge? Well, this is because we have the right channel configured. And if we have like the microphone on left channel configured now, you can see this by pulling the LR pin to ground that the data is now valid with the rising edge instead of the falling edge. So this means if you want to use like uh, uh, two microphones in stereo configuration like this, uh, that you have like one microphone pull to VDD, which means it's a right microphone and one microphone pull to ground so that this is a left microphone, that we can just pull together both data output lines to one single line, which is actually given back to the microcontroller here in this case. And if we are putting like the right uh, data channel, left data channel now together, we have like always exchanging a bit for the left uh, uh, channel and one bit for the right channel, depending if the clock is now on the rising or, or like on the falling edge. But now let's have a look on the first step, what basically PDM signal is. So in the past, I have shown you like uh, how the I2S interface is working and how you can interface uh, ADC or a DAC via I2S. But the thing was that basically an ADC or DAC is transmitting the signal over I2S in some signed integer format, like in 16 bits or 24 bits, which always mean that like the most significant bit is always like the sign bit. And then you have basically the value behind the sign bit, which is basically more or less a two's complement data or like signed integer format. But the PDM microphone is instead directly giving back the output of the PDM modulator. So if you are having here like the analog uh, signal waveform, you can see that we are having like some pulse width. Yeah, basically it's not a PWM signal, it's a pulse density modulated signal, uh, which means that the higher basically the analog signal, the longer is basically the, the high time or the lower the signal is basically the longer is low time. And if you are basically here somewhere around the zero point, then you have like a 50-50% UD cycle somehow signal. And in average, basically that one zero signal is just representing your analog signal. So in fact, it's more or less basically already an analog signal, but it is represent in only ones and zeros. And the good thing is also it is, um, in sync with some external clock. So for this, usually we can use now the SPI module or we can also use the SPI module in I2S configuration. It doesn't care basically because we don't get any signed uh, integer data anyway. It's just a continuous bit stream, which we have to convert later on then by software into some PCM data. 
And here in comparison, we can also see like how normal ADC is working. So we have like here our analog waveform and we have like here everywhere dedicated time points basically, which is defined by the sampling rate. And then like for every sample point, we are getting one dedicated PCM value in this case. And yeah, basically then you might wonder how can we convert like the PDM signal to the PCM signal? Well, this is quite easy. We are just needing a big decimation filter. So you can realize this, for example, with some kind of FIR filter. But in this case, I, I think maybe I will show you this another time how a decimation filter is working. But uh, this time we will just use the library here from ST to convert the PDM to PCM. So now let's have a look to the system, how I set it up on the STM32. So if you had a more detailed look on the STM32 F407, which device or that device well, what I'm using, you can see that we have basically two SPI modules, but the SPI modules are basically working as I2S modules. So basically we have like one time the I2S2 and one time the I2S3 here. And the thing is that I will use the I2S3 as timing master. So this configured as a master device, which is like giving us the master clock, the bit clock, the word select signal and pushing out the data to our external DAC. And the I2S2 module here is used as slave. But as it is a slave, uh, this means basically that we have to provide the clocking signal externally. So one time you can see I have made an external connection of the bit clock pin of the I2S3 uh, module to the I2S2 module. So this uh, path here is going into this direction. And also this module is providing the clock here for our PDM microphone. And then I also did a backwards connection from the word select signal here to the I2S2 module. Well, you can see now that basically the PDM microphone doesn't need any word select signal because it is a continuous data stream anyway, and we don't have to select between left or right channel or something like this. But anyway, we are using the hardware here in I2S mode. So this means we need basically the word select signal only that this hardware module is basically functional and there's no other reason behind it. So the PDM microphone actually doesn't need it. And yeah, well, so our main clock is uh, on like roughly three megahertz, which means basically that we will use a 48 kilohertz sampling rate and 48 kilohertz sampling rate on 64 clock cycles is giving us approximately here three megahertz, which means that we are using the DAC in like 32 bit mode or basically 24 bit modes, but we have to encapsulate 24 bit samples in 32 bits. And then if we are providing also this 3.072 megahertz to the PDM microphone, we are getting also a continuous bit stream here inside, which uh, is giving us a single PDM bits, basically also with a, yes, basically sampling rate of 3.072 megahertz. But you have to consider now the data, which is coming here from the I2S2 hardware inside our mic controller is not usable at all as like a signed integer format or like that you, we can directly feed it back here to the um, I2S mask because it would just sound terrible because actually it is not uh, some kind of integer representative format. And what we are doing here is basically that we are just putting all the um, PDM bits into the decimation filler, which is doing us the decimation of 64. So this means for every 64 bits by the PDM microphone externally, it will generate us one PCM sample basically. And therefore it is called decimation by 64 because you're using 64 bits to generate like one PCM sample more or less. And yeah, basically we are also getting then here like a stream of 48 kilohertz. And what I'm doing is basically just feeding back the 48 kilohertz a sample stream back to the I2S3 device. And this is pushed out then to the uh, DAC so that we can hear it over the um, audio output of our external DAC board now. Okay, now let's have a look on the CubeMX configuration of the STM32. 
So at first, let's have a look on the iSquare S2 device here. And this is basically the module which we will use for feeding the PCM data from the, no, the PDM data from the external microphone into the mic controller. And as I have shown in the block diagram already, I configured it as half duplex slave. So this time no full duplex as we had it like last time where we want to use an external ADC and DAC. So this time we only want to shift in data. So we only have like a half duplex configuration and slave that we will use it basically as timing slave. And then we have just to configure it like mode slave receiver here because we want to receive data. Then I have configured this time communication standard to MSB first, but actually it doesn't really care because we have anyway just a continuous uh, bitstream and like if the word select is giving another signal like one bit before or afterwards, it doesn't really care. But yeah, I have configured then also 48 kilohertz at this point and like 24 bits in 32 bits frame. So yeah, nothing special about the i s S3 module. I have configured it now this time as half duplex master because we want to generate the timings in there. And we also need like the master clock output for our DAC because it's not able to run without a master clock. And yeah, here I put it in mod master transient because you're transmitting data. Um, uh, this time in I square S uh, Philip format and also here 24 bits and 32 bit frames and 48 kilohertz. And also like DMA settings are quite important. So you can see I have uh, got a DMA channel for the um, transmit basically where I also select like half word, half word and that it is like a circular buffer mode in this case. So exactly the same as last time with our um, past projects. And also the i square S2 is running like with the DMA channel where you can see that I have also here a circular buffer with like half word, half word. And yeah, basically that PDM to PCM library is already integrated into the STM32 Cube MX software in the uh, yeah latest releases. So we can just click on here and we can select here enable so that we can directly get that library with a generated project. And we have here some configuration options. For example, here is a high pass filter integrated. So you can see the curves in the application node of what you're putting in there. And then we are, are also having like in pointer channels, out pointer channels. So on our evaluation board, there's basically only one microphone connected. So we are saying that we have like only one channel input, which means that every bit after each other is like um, pointing to the same microphone channel and we are also getting like one single output channel in this case. And yeah, then we have the decimation factor, which is basically 64. And we also had to, um, we have to configure like the end and like the bit order. And yeah, somehow uh, for hardware acceleration purposes, this PDM to PCM library is somehow using the CRC module internally. So we also have to activate it, but to be honest, I don't have any clue how the library itself is working in detail and how the CRC module is uh, like used, but it is definitely somehow, I guess, for hardware acceleration, because if you are running like big decimation filters, this would be somehow quite slow also on the STM32 in this case. So and now let's have a look to the um, mic controller project itself. So at first, this is very basic. We have like the hall in it, then like the initialization of the CRC, of the library, of the two I square S modules. And then we are basically starting here our modules already. At first, it is important that we are enabling the transmit uh, module because we need the clocking and afterwards we can uh, enable the um, slave module here. Uh, because it is, of course, dependent on the clocking of the first one. So it's important that you are activating the transmit uh, I square S uh, three basically at first. Yeah, and then we are over giving here like the uh, pointers to the TX buffer and to the PDM receive buffer, which I have like uh, initialized here at this point. And yeah, you can also see that I have a FIFO here already, but I will explain you this in a minute. And yeah, similar like to like last time on the uh, hall i square s dryer, we are having like different callbacks. For example, here like hall i square s tx half complete callback. We have a tx complete callback, and we also have an rx uh, half complete callback and an rx complete callback. 
But why do we have now, um, or why do we need basically a FIFO buffer? Well, the reason is that we are starting like at first the first I2S module and afterwards the second I2S module, which means basically they are in the end, they are clock synchronous, like from external view, but we cannot guarantee that like the second is completely internal in sync with the first one. So it could be also like that the the second I squares interface is like hanging one clock cycle behind the first one, depending on how long the initialization here is taking as time. So the idea is every time we are getting uh, data into it, uh, we put all the data into a FIFO buffer basically and every time the uh, TX module is generating a, a callback, then we are just taking the data out of the uh, FIFO buffer. And this is what I'm doing here. So basically I have here my PDM RX buffer here. In this case, I'm putting the data into the PDM filter at this point and the PDM filter is giving us the PCM data into this uh, mid buffer, what you can see here. And then afterwards, I'm just checking um, if the FIFO here is already filled with over uh, 128 uh, samples so that we have like a good buffering inside more or less. And in case we are having like more than 128 samples, then we are uh, giving an enable signal, which means that now the hardware is also allowed to read data out of the FIFO buffer in, in this case. Yeah, and every time the PDM filter is finished, it just pushes the data via some for loop here over FIFO write into the FIFO buffer. And every time the TX hardware here is giving us a callback, we are checking if it is already allowed to read out of the uh, FIFO buffer. And then we are putting just the data here one time here to I and then I plus two basically that we are just filling the 16 bit data as MSB first basically into like the 32 bit words of the uh, left and right channel of the I square S hardware. Yeah, and that's basically all. So the library is very easy to use. It is just like one function call and like here's the initialization here of the um, of the PDM to PCM drive. We can also have a look quickly in here if we are just uh, pressing here open declaration and you can also see that we have here one time the uh, possibility to make some configuration. And yeah, if you have some misconfiguration here for the bit order, for example, then you will definitely hear some trashy sound, which is not sounding good at all. And like, uh, at least in the configuration here for the stm 32 f 4 evaluation board, like this is the correct configuration here um, you should use. So as you can hear now already, the sound is coming here through the STM32 F407 evaluation board. So I mean, the sound quality probably is not the best one you can get out there, but I would say still it is quite okay. So if you are really not trusting me, I can also push my finger here on the microphone. Yeah, and I would say have fun trying out yourself.